Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? It's me, Vibs here from Slidenerd. In this video, we are going to talk about the Android Annotations Library and how to do dependency injection with that. Before we start, there are two things that I would like to point out. One, if you go to Google and if you type Slidenerd Dependency Injection, we have a nice post here that talks about all the dependency injection frameworks in Android at one place. That would include Butterknife, RoboGuys, Android Annotations and Dagger. So out of that, there is Butterknife and RoboGuys are right here, whereas the other two are straight in your email inbox. In other words, if you subscribe to our email list, you will get an email that looks like this, which includes all the videos, the comparison between all the libraries, the discussion that talks about which is the best and when you should use which one, and not to mention the code for all our samples, which is on GitHub forward slash Slidenerd. So be sure to subscribe to our email list to get all these updates. So coming back to the topic at hand, Android Annotations is an open source library that basically lets you worry about what you need to do instead of boilerplate code or code that you write again and again that does the same thing. So you see annotation processing is a feature of compiler that lets you write a library. Now basically these guys have written a library. You're going to be putting annotations here and there inside your code and that library or their library is going to read your annotations from say your main activity file and generate appropriate source code files. Now we will see what those source code files are as we go further. But there is no way that you can directly do this to actually work with a library that generates source code in addition to the code that you write, you need to include a plugin called APT. Now here, take a look at this. It says Android Annotations enhances a class by subclassing it and overwrites the methods. Now let's take a look at how that can be done. So in your build.gradle file, you'll be adding this APT plugin, which you will see in the example video on slidenote.com and everywhere where you need to use your activity or service you will have a separate class that is being generated with an underscore at the end for example if you have a main activity android annotation is going to read your class and it's going to generate main activity underscore which you need to refer in the manifest in the intent everywhere where you're trying to access it so let's take a look at what are the different annotations that exist in this library and how we can use them so without using android annotations this code above is what you will have where you say my list activity extends list activity and you do the regular stuff but if you're using it you can simply say at the rate e activity which is the annotation pass the layout id which is r.layout.main and that's it you don't have to write an on create method you don't have to call set content view or anything of that sort so you can see how much this is going to simplify your work that works with the fragment as well there's an e fragment tag which can be used in a similar way so let's say if you want to start an activity whose name is my activity dot java then this is how you would write an intent normally but remember that if my activity dot java uses activate e activity annotation which we just saw right now then Android annotations library will generate a separate file which would be called my activity underscore dot java now that's the file you'll be referring in the manifest that is also how you will be calling intents in other words you have two options you can go here say intent intent is new intent my activity underscore dot class and do the rest of the stuff or aa provides you a simple method which is invoked by saying my activity underscore dot intent to call it and simply say dot start over there now views can also be injected easily using AA library. Notice this, you simply have an edit text here and you say at the rate view by ID. And if you don't pass anything in the brackets here, then it is going to simply inject r.id.myeditText. Of course, you need to ensure that this ID actually exists in your XML. But otherwise, you can specify the ID explicitly by saying at the rate view by ID in the brackets say r.id.myeditText view and that's going to be filled. You can also include various types of resources like strings drawables colors dimensions android annotations has a nice documentation be sure to check the list of all resources it supports for example to add a string you can simply say at the rate string res and pass the id that is r dot string dot hello now if you don't pass this in the bracket then the name of your variable will be considered as the id that aa should find similarly if you have a custom application class which most of you always have you can add the activate e application on top of that class which is not shown here but the use use of doing that would be to go inside your my activity and refer to the application object directly by saying at the rate app imagine this compared to saying get application and then typecasting it 
to whatever application class you have the same way you have two annotations at the rate e bin and at the rate bin so if you have a class say person then in that class person at the top you would write at the rate e bin and inside your activity or fragment or service you would simply write at the rate bin to inject it now remember that the class person or any other simple plain java class should have a constructor that takes either no arguments or a context as a parameter so this is what it would look like you have main activity or sorry you have my activity and inside that you have my bean where i have simply said at the rate bean i can also have an interface like shape where subclasses are rectangle and square and i can write the name of the implementation that should be used when my interface is being referenced over here again you have this at the rate extra annotation that lets you pass extras between two activities when you're using intents the example of this is covered on the video on slidenote.com be sure to check it out there is fragment injection as well where you can say at the rate fragment by id or at the rate fragment by tag now remember one thing very well it does not create fragments for you it only refers to an existing fragment which means you need to have that fragment object either in xml or in java code somewhere same way you have fragment argument injection if you remember very well you can pass arguments to fragments and that can be referred by at the rate fragment arg which is very similar to your extra system services like notification manager sensor manager can be easily referenced by using at the rate system service you don't have to write one line more than that which would be saying context or typecasting it so once all the views are initialized if you want to do something like like access them then take a look at this after views annotation you simply make a method call it whatever you want give it an annotation that says at the rate after views which means this method call is going to be triggered only once your text view is ready where you can simply say text view dot set text the same way there is at the rate after inject which is to be triggered when the injection is complete for example if you have a class say my class now you are specifying that your my class is basically an e bean by using at the rate e bean annotation now inside this class you want some other object of type my other class you can inject that by simply saying at the rate bean here now inside the constructor of my class your dependency variable is going to be null if you want to have a valid value then write a method give it at the rate after inject annotation so that this method is triggered once your dependency object has some value in it and then try to access that value within this method and do something with it now aa library has annotations for almost every type of callback that you guys normally use in your day-to-day -day apps for example if you want the button click you don't need to use the on click attribute or the on view dot on click listener anymore you can just make a method say void my button was clicked and ensure that it has at the rate click annotation with the id of the button so whenever that button is clicked this method is called directly now remember this shouldn't be private it should have the default access or default scope because aa will generate the same class as your main activity with an underscore inside the same package as yours and that's going to try to access this method from there other than that there is of course this second way of writing it where if you don't specify the id then the name of the method will be taken as the id of the button and there's of course another way to write it where you can pass the view object and do something with it as well now the best part which i like about this library is how you can get rid of async tasks completely make a method say some background work pass it whatever you want set whatever parameters you want just write this annotation at the rate background and that will execute in the background thread think about it no need to make any async task or executors or anything you can just call that method like any other method from anywhere and this method will simply run in the background thread every time you call it so it has some parameters as well you can give it an id so that it can be cancelled later you can give several methods the same serial so that they can be executed sequentially you can specify a delay for these methods after how many milliseconds they should start running and of course you can also make a method that runs on the ui thread by simply writing at the rate ui thread now this is now you guys probably question saying wait wait a second why do you need this well remember that from that method which executes in the background you often want to update the progress bar or display some kind of message in the ui now that can be done by calling this method which is called do in ui thread and here you specifically write at the rate ui thread so that android annotation knows that this method should run in the foreground inside which you can access your text view or update your progress bar or anything 
Now, instead of writing those ugly XML style statements, you can further customize your activity by simply adding these annotations like at the rate no title, at the rate full screen, at the rate custom title, where you set it. Again, I'm not sure if these are gonna work on App Compat and Marshmallow Android, which is the latest at the time of shooting this video. But if you guys do find some issues, let me know about it in the comments below. Other than that, there is shared preference annotations. You can have your interface here where you specify the default values for a shared preference, the type, which is defined as simply a variable. And there are methods like name, age, notice that. And there's of course, at the rate shared pref annotation at the top. Now this interface, my prefs, can be used directly inside your activity by saying my prefs underscore and my prefs remember that AA puts an underscore for any special type of class that you construct and there's of course at the rate pref annotation here at the top now you can edit them by saying my prefs dot name dot put say john dot edit dot name dot put dot age and as you can see it's pretty simple and can clear everything by calling clear over here imagine shared preferences could be so simple without writing preference manager dot blah 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 you can also check if a value exists by saying my prefs dot name dot exists find that here check whether you can get it or you can also say provide me a default value if you don't find the value by using this get or method here remember how much we hate that method on create options menu where you write a lot of stuff inside you can completely get rid of it by saying at the rate options menu pass the id here and that's it you don't have to write that method anymore again when one of the items in the options menu is clicked let's say an item with an id r dot id dot menu share is clicked you can have this method triggered which is my method which would be directly called if you use this annotation over here if you don't specify the id of the item in this method here then the name of the method will be used to find the id of that item so make sure that exists in that case you can also have a method that handles clicks or selections from several menu items at the same time by grouping them as an array over here inside act rate options item and you can also add the menu item parameter here again there is a re replacement for on activity result with its annotation in several forms as you can notice here and it also supports several libraries like orm light robo guys trace transactional for sqlite stuff there is a rest api as well which looks very similar to retrofit which i'll be covering one time or the other so make sure that you check out aa and our examples on slidener.com on this be sure to subscribe to our email list at slidener.com to access the example video and other things related to the library google is out on slidener udemy our social accounts on slidener twitter and slidener facebook and not to mention all the code that goes on slidener github thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day